Hi, my name is Wes Simpson. I am the moderator, uh, actually one of the two moderators for today's session. And uh, I am a co-chair of the Wrist Activity Group within the VSF uh, Video Services Forum. Um, and I am also a founder of LearnIPVideo.com. And uh, if you're interested, uh, please uh, get in touch with me. Uh, my co-moderator is uh, Kieran Cunha who is the RISC Forum Director, and he is president, and I'm sorry, founder and CEO of Open Broadcast Systems. On our panel today, we have David Griggs, who is the Senior Product Manager for Media Services with AWS Elemental, and he's also been a contributor to the RISC Activity Group. We have Sergio Amarada, who is a RISC Activity Group member and the Chief Science Officer for SIP Radius. We have Ciro Noronha, who is the RIST Forum President and Executive Vice President of Engineering for Cobalt Digital. Uh, we have Paul Atwell, uh, the RIST Forum Director and uh, President of Media Transport Solutions. We have Rick Ackermans, who is the RIST Activity Group Chair. We call him Chief. Uh, he is Director of RF and Transmission Engineering for CBS. And last but certainly not least, we have Adi Rosenberg, who is a RIST Forum Director and who is the co-founder and CTO of VideoFlow. Uh, we're glad to have everybody here and uh, we'll get to your questions uh, very shortly. So the first question is, does RIST run as an application on third-party hardware or do we need to buy RIST encoders and decoders? Uh, some vendors do offer encoder decoders. Some of them are among uh, these pan, pan, uh, group. Uh, and it's quite easy to implement that yourself or buy a solution from a vendor that has that built in. It also can be uh, available as a virtual machine. A Librist uh, open source uh, is all, library is also available to be integrated. And I'm sure that we will touch base on that as we go along. Next question. Why are there so many competitors on the panel? Maybe a question for Ciro? Yes, thank you. So um, I think we all benefit for, for, from interoperability. So um, it, it's, uh, it's what they, they're calling competition. <laughs> it's a cooperation with competition. Um, the better the protocol we design, the better we have uh, for, for all of us. So it is, it is uh, useful for us, to every one of us to come and bring their experience to have something that works because uh, uh, since the customers have choice, they can just pick whatever is the, the best for that application and they are not locked. So you have more chances actually to sell your product into different environments. So this is why we're all in there. Um, and it's, it's a good business decision for us. Sure, thanks. Uh, next question. What new traction is RISC getting? How fast is uptake growing? Uh, maybe a question for David. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, certainly we uh, at AWS, you know, we're, we're very excited about the potential for this protocol. Um, we were early uh, with our implementation. We have a simple profile running today in our product. And we've seen a lot of interest and a lot of excitement. And I think, um, you know, the attraction that our customers see is that this is a standards-based approach. It's not proprietary. It doesn't belong to a single vendor. It belongs to all of us. And therefore, they have the confidence that, you know, in, by investing in, in, in a protocol such as RIST, that they're seeing a truly multi-vendor interoperable, interoperable approach. Um, and that, that, that uh, lends itself to a strong uptake. So we're very buoyant. We're very, we're very uh, committed to the protocol and excited about the future. Next question is the hot topic. Why would one choose RIST over SRT? Uh, who wants to take that one? <laughs> I'll start. You want to go, go, go first, ID, and I'll complete. <laughs> Well, it starts in the, in the foundation. Uh, RIS is based on an RTP uh, protocol, UDP RTP, which uh, was long been used in the industry, uh, while SRT is uh, the basis of that is UDT, which is a file transfer protocol. 
Uh, Reselecting uh, RTP as the foundation allowed us to, have, to enjoy the benefit of multi, multi, many years of development in that field and to bring forth many applications, uh, bonding, low chair, uh, out of band protection, uh, uh, retransmission throttling. All of those are based on RFCs and knowledge gained in the last 20 years. So when we came to develop the simple profile that was very easy for us to take and enjoy the benefit and uh, uh, implement that and use that for uh, many applications. So uh, our com completing uh, that, well, building on that, um, yes, uh, RISC was designed by a group of experts, not one guy in the back room. It's, it's everybody came together and offer their experience to get best of class on everything. You have no, there's no compromise. You take you take risk and you get best in class. And uh, the, 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 there are actual results to that. Uh, RIST uh, works a lot better than SRT, a high packet loss. And it has a whole bunch of features that it doesn't have. It's actually more secure because of the authentication. Uh, it's got multi-link multi support. And it's, it's, it's simply a, a better protocol. When the pa your packet loss goes up, RISC is going to do it for you a lot, long, lot farther than uh, SRT. Thanks. One thing I, did, I should mention to those listening is there is a chat box and a Q&A box. If you have questions, please feel free to use the Q&A box and I'll make sure they'll get answered during this, during this um, webinar. Uh, yep, the next question. How is risk different to other video delivery protocols? Maybe a question for Adi. Well, um, other protocols, uh, good one. Uh, so there are many proprietary protocols out there. There is the, Zix, the known Zixi protocol, uh, SRT, um, some uh, proprietary protocols being used in the Far East. Um, the main differentiator is that RIST is using RTP. That is the basis of the differentiation. And uh, just like I said before, we are using the RTP capabilities and enhancing on that, while others selected to opt with the, something proprietary, which is normally will not be RTP based. So it will lack some of the functionalities that are inherent with the RTP. And um, for instance, things like uh, timestamp, sequence numbers, um, a forward error correction, uh, that is a, in the norm in the industry, uh, uh, supporting a, a SMPD 2022-7, and more and more. Uh, also, just like uh, Sio said, when we developed the RIST, we took inputs from the industry. We looked what the industry needs and put it in the protocol. It's not like sitting in the dark room thinking, oh, I, ha I have a cool feature. It's talking and using experience. We went to ESPN, Fox, Charter. Um, we have uh, many, uh, many participants who are clients of the technology. They bring the use case and we try to find the best solution to, uh, to uh, solve their problem. Uh, and that is introduced into the wrist or will be put as a feature in the next profile. Uh, document that will be published and we will keep keeping uh, every VTrans we have a new interop and a new uh, profile and the advanced profile is coming it has many many additional capabilities that no other protocol to date uh, has and uh, that's something which is very exciting for all of us. Okay, and, if I, and if I could. I just want to um, chime in. Yeah sorry go on. Um, you know, just to expand a little bit on the theme of RTP, you know, RTP stands for real-time protocol. It's the basis for SMPTE SD2110, all the standards that are there. It's the basis for uh, digital audio in the form of AES67 and Dante Audio. It's the basis for SMPTE ST2022, which is MPEG transport stream over IP. Um, it's, it's extremely widely used in the uh, modern media uh, content creation market. So it, it's really uh, a, a, a natural marriage between RIST using RTP and all these other media formats using RTP simply because RTP was designed 
just for this purpose. High quality, synchronized, time sensitive media transport. Thanks a lot, Alice. So our next question is, is there an open source implementation for REST? Maybe Sergio can take that. Yes. Well, there, there's more than, you know, just a single implementation, a single open source project. There's an entire ecosystem that is built around a library that's written in C called Librist. Uh, the ecosystem has a series of tools, sample applications, and different wrappers for you to use the library in other languages like Python, C++, etc. Okay, thanks a lot, Sergio. And this Librist, what license does it have? Does it have an Apache 2.0 license or some other license? It's, it's, even, it's one of the most liberal licenses, BSD Type 2, which means you can grab the source code, you can grab the library, use it in your project, modify it, and you're not forced or required to submit your, your changes back. You can keep them to yourself. The only requirement is that you put a copyright notice that you're using the library in your product. Okay, thanks a lot, Sergio. Um, and apart from VLC and Wireshark, what other app open source applications are related to the risks in the future? Well, we have a GStreamer has already implemented a, a simple profile. We have another library similar to Libris called UPipe uh, that has simple profile on it. Uh, you know, we have FFmpeg uh, that we're we're in the process of adding support directly into it. Uh, hopefully, it will be done uh, before the next release. Uh, and other other projects, other open source projects have grabbed the library and uh, added support for RISC within their project using the library as well. Okay, great. Um, hot, hot topic at the moment uh, is the cloud. Does anybody know of any cloud services using RISC for content distribution? And I'm sure David would love to answer this question. Yeah, I mean, you know, at AWS, we're, um, we're, uh, we have our, uh, as part of the media services portfolio, we, we have a reliable TS service that I happen to uh, uh, be responsible for. And um, clearly, we see RIST as an instrumental um, uh, tool in the box to help our customers deliver transport stream, particularly um, around the world. So um, yeah, Media Connect is the service, and uh, we're really we're really um, thrilled that we are part of the um, early adoption of the RISC protocol. So, so David, um, uh, what versions of RISC? Well, you, I think you've already answered that. Uh, it's only Simple Profile today in the, in the Media Connect. That's right. Yes, but th that said, um, yes, today we we are we're fully compliant with Simple. Uh, profile, but we will be introducing uh, main profile uh, this year, and then of course we're super interested in advanced and uh, where that where, how that pans out, and we'll definitely, you know, I think we want to continue our risk journey as part of AWS and Media Connect. Okay, hey, um, so Rick, um, do you see, um, you know, the risk products and uh, new standards threatening other? Uh, products in, in the space, particularly the uh, the ones that are based on 3G, 4G, 5G mobile radios and bonding and all that stuff? I don't, know if it, I don't think it necessarily threatens it. I think it's something that complements it. I th certainly think that RIST uh, can work well over those. RIST is agnostic as to the transport and media. Um, so it works well, whatever you're doing. Um, as we've done some other demos in the past and as we, in the other versions of the presentation, who showed that risk can work in a hybrid environment, which includes 4G, 5G, uh, and other uh, other internet transport methodologies. Okay. So what about latency? Uh, one of the things that a lot of people care about in professional media transport is latency. Um, Sarah, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what risk does in terms of latency, how it performs? Yes, thank you. Um, the, the one thing I like to say is the, the more time you, want, you have to do a job, the better job you can do. So that applies to protocols too, right? So you can trade off latency for um, reliability. And the nice thing about risk is that it, it gives you that knob. So if you have a, a very good network, uh, you can 
bring down the latency. Essentially, it's not, it's not very difficult to understand. If, you, uh, if all packets are making it, you don't need to retry a packet many times. So you don't need to allow time for that. And that's the nice thing about RISC. It will allow you to fine tune. So it's, it's, if you're comparing it to, let's say, SRT, it's not necessarily better or worse. Uh, RISC will give you the best possible solution for that network. And by the fact that you can, if you, if you really need that uh, delivery to be uh, reliable, you can uh, turn the crank down to higher latency and make, have uh, more of the packets make it if, if the network goes bad. And, and ju just building on that, Sarah, I mean, it, it's, it, it is true that we didn't specify any particular algorithm for calculating buffer sizes or when to send ACK messages or things like that. That's all up to individual implementers in, in their RIST environment, correct? Yes. So the, the approach that RIST has taken is similar to an approach done for, let's say, video encoders. Um, we define the, the, net, the, the protocol and leave those details to the, to the discretion of the implementer. So you can have two RIST implementations that can interoperate, they will work together well, one is a little bit better than the other, the same way as you have two encoders, one may be a little bit better than the other, even though both are produce a legal bit stream. So that's another nice thing about RIST. It, they it interoperates, but the uh, different vendors are still free to innovate. I'd like to just add something there. We talked about the latency. Now, one thing to remember is that the latency is a product of the round trip time. So if you're using RIST in a local environment, such as for local news gathering and stuff, your round trip time is relatively low. So as a result, your latency is low. So in many applications where you're going locally, it's, you know, in itself, it doesn't become an inherent issue. All right, Kieran, do you want to take a couple questions? Uh, sure. So one of the important questions is regarding Zixi, a well-known protocol. And is RIST compatible with all current versions of Zixi? Maybe a question for Rick? Uh, well, the answer to all current versions, I, I would imagine no. Um, they're incorporating uh, RIST in, into their products in Zixi. But uh, just if the question is all current products, I don't believe so. But hopefully somebody else would know better than I. Anybody want to take that question? I can try and take that. Uh, Zig implemented simple uh, RIST, which is available for, I believe, like almost a year. And now they are announcing their uh, main, ton, main profile, compatibility. I have been involved in testing and interoping, doing interoperability tests with that, uh, with their solution, uh, which is another aspect of uh, the RIST is that we as vendors, even VideoFlow is a, com a competing vendor to Zigzi. We go and test our products once against the other to check interoperability to make sure that uh, if I'm interoperable with Zigzi and I'm interoperable with Zero, then by that fact, Zigzi will be interoperable with a Cobalt product and with the, with the Librist and so on. We usually come together not only as a multi-vendor interoperability that happens uh, before VTrans, but also we work together when releasing products to make sure that that interoperability is maintained so that product can be launched faster to the market. Uh, both Zigzi clients, my clients, and their prospective customers will know that they are interoperable and that affects the industry and saves time and uh, spread happiness to the world by doing so. And I would just like to add to my previous statement uh, sorry, you ask an engineer and you say the word all, and I focus on the word all. Um, I'm sure it's compatible with many of their products. It may be compatible with most of their products. Um, but as an engineer, I can't say yes to the word all. <laughs> uh, so the next question is regarding NDI. And there's a particular, some of you may have read the Broadcast Bridge article about NDI and whether it can be transported over an unmanaged network. And the question is, can RIST support intact transporting NDI? And that's maybe a good question for Sergio. Right, I mean, there, there's a couple of approaches that can be taken. I mean, NDI is a TCP-based protocol. So uh, in order to transparently uh, transport it, we need for the advanced profile to be finished. In the meanwhile, uh, we're, we're looking at an approach where we have a double gateway, a gateway that will convert uh, the NDI feed 
into a pure UDP feed so that we can feed it to wrist and then on the other side, convert it back to NDI. Okay, thanks a lot. Is Next. there another approach? Sorry, Sorry. continue. Is, is there another approach? Right, the second approach is to convert it directly to UDP using their own SDKs. They have special tools now that you can extract the raw audio and video out of it without decompressing it. And once you have that, you can transmit raw audio and video over UDP and then on the other side, grab that and using their tools as well, turning into NDI as well. Again. Um, another approach, I will jump in. Another approach is to force the NDI to work with multicast which they introduced in version three and above. So using the wrist tunnel, one can push the TCP management control in the status through the wrist tunnel and then forward the multicast, which is to do with the video and audio through the tunnel. And that uh, gives you a error recovery because it's a high bandwidth and the TCP is forwarded as it is. So that's another approach that people can uh, make. I do believe that the next profile, just like Sergio said, with the uh, ARQ tunnel, which is a part of the advanced profile, uh, a wrist will be able, a wrist protocol will be able to tunnel everything, provide the ARQ, and uh, that would be an easy solution to implement. Great, thanks a lot, great answers. The next question is, is there a wrist app for iPhone and or Android? That's maybe a good question for Rick. It is something that we are strongly pursuing. Um, you can use VLC, um, which is available for both of those right now for viewing and in some cases even for sending. Um, but, but the wrist activity group and the wrist forum is strongly pursuing uh, making an iPhone and Android app available. Great. And so from a buyer's perspective, what is wrist and why should I mention to my vendors uh, that they should support wrist? And it's a good question for Addy. Oh, thank you, um, as being a vendor. Um, when you are a buyer and you insist on risk, that means you can buy, you can pick and choose. You are not tied up to a single vendor, a single technology. As a buyer, you can say today select a encoder with wrist and tomorrow change that to another one with wrist. You will know that uh, you don't have to change and forklift the upgrade all the ecosystem that you build because the protocol isn't interoperable. So today you might use, let's say, a cobalt encoder, and you have, if you are not happy with that, you will take an harmonic encoder if they have wrist. So you can pick and choose, optimize your buying power, and uh, uh, enjoy the benefit of that. Uh, buyers hate to be tied up to only one particular vendor, and this is the norm in our broadcast industry to date. Great. And the next question is, how much does risk cost to join? Why should I join? And that's a great question for Paul. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Maybe a technical difficulty slide here. Yep, okay. Um, does anybody else want to answer that question? Um, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, since I'm president of the thing, right? Um, so, as you remember from the first slide, there's the risk activity group uh, that's writing the specification, and there's the risk forum. So, if you want to participate in a risk activity group, uh, your company needs to be a member of the VSF. So, once you join the VSF, and there's some cost to that, you can participate uh, on, on the design of risk, if you will. Now, uh, for the risk forum, which is a marketing organization, there is no cost to join. We have three membership levels. The lowest level is free. And uh, if you elect to join at one of the highest levels, you, you, you have a bit better product placement and you have uh, some influence of what's going on there. But uh, you can join that uh, for free if you want. And we, uh, we actually welcome everybody. We would like you to join. And the, the reason why should I join, get involved, right? If you, uh, if you join just a marketing organization, you, you know what's going on. You can, uh, if you're making products, you can push your products there. Um, and if you want to participate in, that, in the actual creation of the risk specification, um, even as a user, just come in there and say, what, what do I need? What I want? I want this and that for the, for the specification. Come and join, tell us. 
um, we welcome all kinds of input. Right. Uh, one of the current hot topics at the moment is 8K. Um, and the question is, how does RISC support these 8K workflows? That's a good question for Adi. Thank you, Kieran. Um, 8K is a resolution, uh, RIST uh, carrying MPEG over uh, TS over IP. So once you take the 8K, compress it to a transport stream, uh, push it out as an RTP, RIST will uh, be happy to convey that to your destination or distribute that to anywhere you want. So an 8K decoder, uh, if it's available, maybe OBS has one, can decode that and uh, push that to the market and be deliver that on the other end. So it's quite native to push any type of content. Sure, great. Um, it's already been covered, but I think we should reiterate. Um, who is behind Wrist? And that's a question for Ciro. Okay, um, the guys you're looking at are behind Wrist. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> the, the real, uh, yeah, well, the, the RIST AG chairman is right there. So, um, RIST, RIST was created in response to industry requests. It was more specifically SPN because they had equipment from vendor A, equipment from vendor B, and they didn't talk. So they said, they turned to the, to the industry, basically. The guys you're looking at that make equipment and say, fix it. Right, so that's us. Uh, we all got together. It's in the context of the video services forum. It's not a, it's not a vendor thing. It's a, it's an industry organization that has both vendors and and uh, users, and that's what we created. And then on the side, there's the risk forum that does the marketing of it. So if, if I could also jump in a little bit, so just so people understand a little bit more about the video services forum. Um, that, that group has been around for uh, over 20 years. Um, I'm one of the founding members of that. <laughs> so yeah, I am kind of old. Um, but, but the thing that, that's been interesting about watching the VSF over the years is we've developed a lot of technologies that have gone on to become uh, widely accepted. Um, SMPTE SD2022 was born in the Pro MPEG forum, matured within the VSF, and then standardized in SMPTE. Um, a lot of the work that uh, went into creating SMPTE SD2110 was foreshadowed in uh, the Video Services Forum's uh, uh, Technical Recommendation 03. And um, we, we still see a lot of work going on in the, in the VSF with respect to um, wide area network for SD2110 and something that's just starting off and have a lot of activity is the uh, the ground to cloud, cloud to ground um, activity. So, RIST is not an anomaly. The, you know, the, the VSF has been working on this. The other thing I wanted to point out is that if you want to know what companies are involved, at the last interop, and let me see if I can get them all. Um, so we had testing between uh, vendors uh, to show that vendor A could talk to vendor B, and the people that participated were uh, Nevion, Evert. Cobalt, SIP Radius, Video Flow, Zixi. Um, let's see, who else? Who am I missing? Uh, Cobalt. We had a Libris. What, what's that? Cobalt. Co I said Cobalt. Net Insight. Net Insight. That was the one I was looking for. Um, uh, QVidium as well. So there's um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different companies bringing technology, and they all play nicely together. Great. Thanks a lot, Wes. Uh, just to reiterate, there is a Q&A box in Zoom. So if you do have any questions, please, please feel free to answer and we'll make sure that this group of expert panelists can, can share their thoughts. Uh, I'll pick up I'll merge the next two questions. Um, what is the difference between RIST and Zixi? And what is the difference between RIST and SRT? Uh, that's a good question for Ciro, maybe. Okay, so we, we, talked, uh, we talked a lot about uh, RIST and SRT. Uh, I, I did, Gave, gave a good technical description of, uh, of a recent SRT. SRT was something that was developed by High Vision, which by the way is a member of the RISC forum and is, was part of Simple Profile. Um, and that, 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 
that's the pedigree of the thing. Now, Zixi is also another company that has a proprietary a protocol for transport over the internet and is a very active member of the uh, the uh, RIST AG. So, if you if you have if you're Zixi licensee, if you're ta taking Zixi, uh, you can you now have a choice of running the pro proprietary protocol and or or RIST. So. What risk is bringing to you is interoperability with no compromises. Yeah, that's great, sir. It's great to see that so many organizations who you would think are competitors and wouldn't talk to each other can come to risk and be part of a group that can develop a new protocol. Uh, question for Rick. What are the main technical advantages of risk? Well, the main technical advantage of risk is its interoperability. Um, for sending video over the internet, there are a lot of uh, proprietary formats that work quite well, some of them represented by people here, but they, but they don't interoperate. RIST gives you interoperability. So you can have a, a sender made by one manufacturer and a receiver made by another. And that's, that's the strong point of RIST, the fact that the equipment will interoperate with other, uh, other vendors. Um, there is a question from the floor, and it's a question for what Ryas. Is, is there any online training available that covers RIST? Um, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things that I've been working on uh, for the past couple of months and uh, planning to go live uh, on September 1st. Um, I'm developing a course that covers uh, RIST, SRT, and RTMP technology, and you can access it at uh, learnipvideo.org. Um, and, and if anybody is interested, um, you know, send me an email and I'll give you a nice discount coupon. But yeah, I'm, I'm planning to have that course up and running um, uh, in a nutshell uh, on September 1st. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh, next question. What is the RIST AG, RIST Activity Group, working on next? It's a question for Rick. Well, the next thing we're working on, as was shown in the chart earlier, is the advanced profile. And that will add a lot of additional functionality, which is still under, under development, so it's, it's subject to change. Uh, we are looking at uh, some functionality, too, uh, to allow for a hybrid uh, satellite and terrestrial implementation of RISC. Uh, many things in the satellite industry uh, will be changing because of some uh, reuse of the C-band spectrum. And so many folks are looking at uh, solutions, possibly having to go to C, uh, sorry, having to go to KU or KA band, which is subject to rain fade. So we're looking at what options there are uh, to allow that to help alleviate people's fears of using uh, satellite links that uh, don't work in bad weather. Great. Do you uh, add to that? Yeah, sure. Feel free, Eddie. Uh, so not only that we are doing a hybrid satellite, we already mentioned that ARQ tunnel to allow to push any type of traffic to a risk tunnel and apply protection, ARQ protection on that. So that can be TCP, UDP, any traffic, which is not a simple profile, which is the what we do today. We will have dynamic configuration. We are talking about adaptivity, adapting the source to the network conditions. Uh, for those who don't want to implement uh, the whole scope, we are thinking of adding a VPN capability uh, to simplify uh, uh, connectivity. Uh, we're talking about a relay capability in the cloud relay that uh, one will be able to push to the cloud or connect through the, a single point, multiple clients with uh, basically punching through firewalls and simplifying the connections for people but also to use that to maybe a part of the hybrid satellite to distribute, sending one sender and a distribution to multitude of those. Um, so yeah, there are many things that are coming from the industry. Those are things that we had to build the basis, a foundation, and now we are adding those to the advanced profile and uh, hopefully by VTrans next year, physical or virtual veterans will be able to showcase that. Oh, that's great, Adi. Great for, um, great that you've talked about the timeline as well. So let's, let's go back to today. Who is using RIST today? And let's see if Rick could answer that question. Well, RIST is being used by, you know, many of the people who buy the products that, that are here. 
Um, it's being used uh, for many applications of the AWS cloud. Um, and so it, it is being widely used and adopted. Uh, the manufacturers can speak better as to actually who's using it than I can. Uh, and quite frankly, there may be a lot of people out there who are using it who may not even know they're using it. They know, hey, I bought these boxes. <laughs> they, send, they send pictures. They work. Hey, you know, I'm doing interviews. Um, in fact, a lot of people have done a lot of that over the last five months who've uh, had to run out and buy product uh, in, in desperation for, because of all the work, that home, work at home that's going on. Um, so there actually are probably numerous users out there who are using Wrist who have no idea what's in the box. So um, real quick, Paul, weren't, weren't you involved with some uh, projects that you can talk about publicly? Oh, sorry, no audio, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what's happening. The same. Yeah. Um, can I mention some? Yeah. Sure. So we have our moderator, his products are feeding one of the Britain's biggest providers. Uh, news uh, groups. Uh, this has been running for more than a year. I believe the TV stations in the U.S. using Grist for their backup, some uh, to do news gathering, some to do STL applications. Uh, Grist is being used uh, to uh, backup uh, main feeds uh, across Atlantic, across Atlantic uh, by multiple uh, vendors. Um, the are, install are installations that we made public as a, a risk forum in our webinars, mentioning the likes of Mankin out of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, they've been using Grist from April 2018, just uh, as a simple profile came. Uh, they immediately embraced that. Uh, other stations in the East Coast, uh, in the US East Coast, are using that. Um, there are in the installations in the Far East, uh, yeah. going down even to Australia using uh, RIS today. Uh, also in Singapore, there are uh, several uh, RIS-based uh, delivery services to date. And those are growing on a daily basis. Uh, I have to mention also Africa. Uh, there are some uh, service operators that are embracing RIS as a replacement. Uh, for its professional capabilities, and uh, they change from a, a proprietary vendor to a full risk uh, solution um, to enjoy that, uh, the fruits of that uh, work. Yeah, I would I would echo what Adi said, and at least from my personal experience of deploying risk in the field, the, uh, and in the Far East in particular, the key reason for using RIST was to be able to use multiple ISPs at the same time. This is a key, key requirement for professional video um, and something that I think pretty much all other sort of open protocols don't support. It's something that RIST, it's a key requirement in many territories um, as there can be cable cuts, other ISP issues. Yeah, survivability is the name of the game when you're talking about high quality contribution video. No doubt about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, do, do we dare see if Paul is coming back or if not? Paul, someone else? You, you want to give us an audio check, Paul? Testing, testing one, two. No, no, no we can see your lips moving. Question. We can see your lips, but uh, no. Yeah. Well, so the All next right. question hey, is. Paul, do you know sign language? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. right. <laughs> American or, U or European sign language. <laughs> yeah. um, the next question is, what if my company has a mix of unrelated brands of hardware? Can risk still be applied? And does anybody want to answer that? I can take that. Yeah, so plenty of gateway manufacturers in the room. So Andy. Yeah, so I, I'm a gateway manufacturer, but uh, we can uh, maybe net, we also have net inside that does gateways and also ZigZig. Uh, with with a gateway, you can, can basically can you, okay. You're going to define a gateway. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, a gateway is a device that take ASI, IP, UDP, RTP uh, on one end and outputs RIST on the other end, and vice versa on the receiver side. So a gateway like that can be tied up to multitude of encoders, decoders, um, multiplexers, inhale that feed and send that to the other side. Uh, one of the benefits of RIST that we did not uh, discuss is the bidirectional capability. So everything can be tied up to a single tunnel uh, 
um, going to the destination, sending back and forth. So you have a bit directional capability. It also gives you the joy of in-band management. So one can control a remote device through a wrist tunnel. Uh, for instance, in the last five months, we have installations with wrist that, in, that are doing PTZ control using the wrist tunnel, pushing a TCP traffic to con uh, control remote PTZ cameras. So if you have a vendor with legacy equipment or proprietary equipment, uh, but more, most of them are supporting UDP, RTP, ASI, a gateway device is a perfect solution to take those uh, feeds in, uh, aggregate them, send them to the other side and then re-aggregate that and aggress that to the destination via UDP, RTP, ASI. And uh, as I said, video flow has a solution. Uh, one can build such a thing if you don't want to buy a vendor solution. Use a Librist, uh, which can take a UDP, RTP, push that to the other side, develop the application yourself. If you don't know how to do that, there are uh, consultants out there and the uh, integrators uh, Paul Atto uh, being one of them and many other members of the risk forum that you can find that can uh, guide you and help you selecting the, uh, the right product uh, for the job. Now, if uh, I may that, add that, to that uh, a little bit, the, the gateway uh, that I refers to a gateway device, it doesn't necessarily need to be a piece of hardware. Uh, most vendors, you know, Adi, you know, video flow, Cip radios, offer a virtualized version of the same gateway. You can, you know, in today's world, you have your own uh, VM farms, you spin up a VM, put the gateway software for vendor A, vendor B, and suddenly all these other, all this equipment that you have laying around becomes risk enabled. I want to add to that uh, because we have David with us. Many vendors that wanted to reach AWS Media Connect services look for a solution and risk uh, with risk proposal. They can take a gateway, don't have, don't have to have a specific uh, code or, in, or upgrade their devices. They can take a gateway, connect to it, to Media Connect services for contribution or distribution. And that is a perfect vessel for doing that. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great point, Adi. Um, you know, we see ourselves as kind of the, the meat between the sandwich there. And, you know, we have great vendors providing gateway products on both the encoding and decoding side. And, and to your point, Sergio, that could be, it could be true decoding, it also just be a multicast conversion, right? Back to in, in, keeping it in the compressed domain, taking it back to multicast. A lot of options there, ASI, SDI, you know, 2110 out. But yeah, like from, from our perspective, we just want to be able to provide a sort of connectivity between those two, those products and offer an alternative to, you know, the public internet there that, that allows you to drive down those ARQ buffers to a lower latency for some of those more timing sensitive workflows. Right. And so, Adi, you mentioned in-band control. Is in-band control available only on main profile? Well, currently, yes. In-band control is basically allowing to push any type of traffic in, an IP, in a full IP datagram, a full packet, whether it's a UDP, TCP, through a main uh, tunnel. Uh, this is available in the RISC protocol, and this is being used heavily uh, with my products, uh, uh, I know that Paul Atwell is using that in his installations, using in-band controlling remote devices by way of in-band management, uh, controlling PTZ cameras, uh, third-party equipment. Uh, that's a perfect solution uh, for doing so. Uh, the in-band, it doesn't have to be also, uh, for management. It can be pushing uh, audio, TCP-based audio, HTTP, uh, SSH through a, through a one tunnel that simplifies things for the IT people. It simplifies the things for the broadcast people. Um, and that's one of the gains of uh, uh, having inputs from the industry of what they need. Basically not needing multiple tunnels or VPNs to complete one, one job. Right. Next question. Does Rift so, have um, any con Sorry, go on. I was just going to say, um, we're, we're um, kind of bumping up against our, uh, uh, our promised time limit. We were going to try to keep this to around 45 minutes or so, or maybe a little bit longer. Uh, I was just going to say that, that um, what Adi was just talking about was a good segue into the, uh, the risk roadmap here. Um, as we move you know, from simple profile, we've talked about that a lot, main profile. And again, both of those specs are available on uh, the vsf.tv website. 
And then the advanced profile, you know, even better tunneling, um, some common VPN uh, applications. And one of the things that I'm really excited about is decoder synchronization. So I could have multiple decoders at different places around uh, the, the globe, literally, that are uh, displaying their video content in a synchronized manner. Um, so anyhow, Karen, if you wanted to ask one more question, that's fine. I'm sorry to jump in. It's okay, no problem. Um, the, the, the next question is, does RIST have any congestion detection or congestion control? This is a, obviously an important issue right now on the uh, congested internet. Adi, you want to take that question? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we did not specify one congestion control. We actually le left it to the implementer to decide how to do that, uh, thinking that there are many uh, flavors of congestion control and it, it will be up to the sender to decide how to uh, mitigate that. Uh, this is something that we allow people to innovate and make a better product. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the thing that we allowed the people to implement and uh, like say video flow has its own flavors, but uh, we will, as long as we are interoperable and the basic protocol is uh, uh, working, then that is something that should be, shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, okay. if, I, if I may add, I know we have almost run out of time, but that's one of the places where you can innovate. You, you manage your retransmissions, how you manage that retransmission, how, when do you send it, how much do you send it? And, and, and that's, uh, that's one of the differences. So, right. so Paul, did you wanna take us through some of these uh, places where people can get more information? Uh, if my audio is working now, I will. Yes, you you okay. are. We can hear you. Okay. So there's a variety of web pages where we can where people can pick up information. The technical references can be picked up on the Video Services Forum website at www.vsf.tv. There's a download section. Uh, also at the uh, RIST Forum at rist.tv, and there's several videos available on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com and uh, there's also risk demos available up on the, on the YouTube channel as well. And so we always welcome uh, people to send in their questions. If you have any technical um, concerns, if you just want to figure out, you know, how to get some more information about risk, uh, just send us an email at uh, info at risk.tv. And, uh, you know, we monitor that, that mailbox and, and, and look for things. So um, I did want to say thanks to um, everybody that's on the panel today. Um, we had a, we had a really good crew, um, you know. So thank you to uh, Sergio, um, thank you to Ciro, thanks Kieran, uh, thanks Rick, thank you Paul. We're glad you could talk. Uh, <laughs> thank you to um, to uh, David and thank you to Adi. Uh, I think this was a, a great session. And uh, we really appreciate everybody's time for uh, joining in today. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, thank you, uh, Wes, as well. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Wes. Thanks for doing thank the moderating. All right. Thank My you, Kieran, for staying that early. <laughs> <laughs>